wanted to shut down illegal factories and landfills. Cargo train derails near Rawang Station. Good afternoon. Welcome to News on 2. I'm Jessica Lee. The government aims to shut down at least 40 illegal plastic factories and landfills in the country within six months. Housing and Local Government Minister Zuraida Kamurudin said two illegal factory owners have been charged in court, while two landfills are in the process of being cleared up. Saya berharap saya boleh melaksanakan tugas dalam masa enam bulan satu tahun untuk membersihkan semua kelian-kelian plastik uh, illegal, not only plastik, dumping site, uh, dump site yang illegal untuk membersihkan. Zurada said this after visiting Resource Co Asia Sindiran Berhad at IPG Industrial Park Tase in Ipoh, Pera yesterday. Elaborating further, Zurada said the ministry observed that the technology adopted by Resource Co would be ideal in helping to clear up illegal plastic plants and landfills in the country. In addition, she said the ministry had received a proposal from a local company on the use of the technology known as the Asher for the purpose of clearing up illegal plastic plants and landfills. A cargo train carrying a cement or carrying cement heading to a Sungai Bolo Selangor from Tasik Perak was reported to have derailed near the Rawang station yesterday evening. Kreta Pitana Melayu Berhad Chief Executive Officer Mohamed Rani Hisham Sam Samudin in a statement said the incident had caused the only railway track to be completely blocked. Mohamed Rani Hisham said that 8 out of 30 coaches had derailed while 22 others remained on the track. The driver and his assistant did not suffer any injuries. Following the incident, all train services including ETS, KTM Commuter and KTM Cargo which used the route faced a delay of 90 minutes. As for KTM Commuter passengers, the service between the Port Klang and Tanjong Malim route will end at the Sungai Bulo station and at Saranda station. The affected route will reopen as soon as repair works are completed. The proposal to form the Independent Police Complaints and Misconduct Commission, or IPCMC, has gotten a positive response from the Royal Malaysia Police, or PDRM. Inspector General of Police, Datuk Sri Abdul Hamid Bador, said several efforts need to be given attention for a more effective, uh, and he is optimistic that IPCMC can be realised after 15 years of being stunted. Uh pertanggungjawaban ya, kepada pegawai penyelia sekiranya berlaku salah laku terhadap anggota di bawah seliaannya pegawai yang sejurus selepasnya itu pegawai penyelianya akan juga diambil tindakan jadi itu akan memberikan kesan yang lebih apa ni lebih efektif dalam saya menangani ancaman keruntuhan disiplin ya. Accountability in the event of employee misconduct supervisors under the monitoring officer supervisors will also be taken measures that will affect the more active in my discipline to address threat of collapse. Datuk Sri Abdul Hamid, however, said it is too early for him to target the decrease in discipline problems among personnel if IPCMC is formed. Elaborating on PDRM's acceptance of IPCMC, he said the acceptance is not influenced by anyone and is the result of self-awareness by taking examples from foreign countries. He also reiterated that the establishment of IPCMC will not interfere with integrity and standard compliance department in terms of the responsibilities of power, but will in fact help strengthen the department. Over 3,000 dealers in Johor Bahru was found to have not renewed their business licenses, causing Johor Bahru City Council, or MBJB, to experience a reduction in yield. According to MBJB Secretary Abdul Malik Ismail, last year, the council targeted a revenue of license applications of 32 million ringgit. However, only 29 million ringgit was collected. This year, MBJB targeted 33 million ringgit. However, as of last month, only 9 million ringgit has been collected so far.
diharapkan kita akan buat operasi besar-besaran supaya pemilik premis ini mempunyai lesen yang sah eh, yang uh, apa ni mereka meniaga kena mendapat kelulusan daripada pihak MJB. Abdul Malik said this after leading an integrated operation for the enforcement of licensing of business premises at a shopping centre in Johor Bahru. The operation was accompanied by 30 enforcement members and 10 members of a licensing unit. Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad said he is satisfied with the Dewan Rakyat's decision to pass the motion of the proposed redelineation of electoral boundaries in Sabah. The motion, which involves adding 13 state seats, was tabled by the Premier for the second reading and was passed with 158 of the 222 MPs supporting it in block voting. <laughs> To Dr. Mate said this to reporters at the parliament lobby. The motion only required a simple majority to be passed. It was approved almost three years after the Sabah State Assembly passed an amendment bill to amend Article 14, Clause, Subsection 2 of the Sabah Constitution to increase the number of state elected representatives to 73 from 60 on the 9th of October 2016. Prior to that, the Election Commission, or EC, had completed a report on the delineation exercise and submitted it to then Prime Minister Datuk Sri Najib Tun Raza on the 21st of February 2017. No motion, however, was made to table it in the Dewan Rakyat while Barisan National was in power at both the federal level and in Sabah before the 14th general election in May last year. Tun Dr. Mate, when tabling the motion, said the Election Commission, or EC, had recommended 13 additional state seats for Sabah, namely Bengkoka, Bandau, Pintasan, Pantai Dalit, Darau, Tanjung Keramat, Limbahau, Tulit, Telupit, Sungai Manila, Lamak, Segama and Kukusan. He said the increase in state seats in Sabah would benefit the people, especially in getting more efficient and effective services from the elected representatives, as well as better living standards and stimulate development in the state. Strawak assures that the Malaysia Day 2019 celebration on the 16th of September at Padang Merdeka, Kuching will take on a vibrant atmosphere as well as boost the spirit of love for the country. Deputy Chief Minister Dato' Ammar Awang Tengah Ali Hassan, acting as the minister responsible for the celebration, said that Strawak would provide cooperation, support and assistance to ensure that the event would proceed smoothly and achieve its objectives. Speaking to a media conference after receiving a courtesy call from Communications and Multimedia Deputy Minister Adin Shazli Shith yesterday, Dato' Amar said the state government hopes that with the celebration in Sarawak, it will enhance the spirit of racial unity and integration in Malaysia. Also present were the Ministry's Deputy Secretary General, Shakib Ahmad Shakir, and heads of the Sarawak agencies under the Ministry. A joint committee between the federal government and the state government was formed to coordinate the celebration. Meanwhile, Adin Shazli expressed his gratitude to Sarawak on the setting up of the Joint Committee and was confident that the Malaysia Day celebration would be carried out as planned. Adin said this year's Malaysia Day celebration in Sarawak will be very special in line with the theme of Sayangi Malaysia Ku, Malaysia Berse, which is Love My Malaysia, Clean Malaysia in achieving the aspirations of the people who reject unhealthy practices like corruption. Coming up next, Malaysia can exceed 1 trillion ringgit total exports target. Now, Malaysia is capable of exceeding the 1 trillion ringgit total exports target this year, boosted by strong collaboration between various government agencies and private sectors. Now, according to International Trade and Industry Minister Datuk Darul Leking, last year, Malaysia recorded 998 billion ringgit in total exports, about 0.2% short of surpassing the 1 trillion ringgit threshold. They just had their last, sorry, not last, but they just had their rounds of discussion recently in uh, Australia, Melbourne. And I think the member countries are 
finding common common ground for reasons to conclude it. Malaysia as well as the nine other ASEAN countries plus the six dialogue countries uh, are moving towards the conclusion of the RCEP. Dato Daryl said this in a press conference at the Beyond Paradigm Summit 2019 yesterday. Meanwhile, the minister was also asked on negotiations to create the world's largest free trade agreement, the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership or RCEP, and said the member countries have just concluded their latest rounds of discussion in Australia recently. RCEP is a proposed free trade agreement between 10 ASEAN member countries and six Asia-Pacific nations, namely Australia, China, India, Japan, South Korea and New Zealand. The Malaysia Cocoa Board hopes that the cooperation between the ASEAN countries will be strengthened to overcome any issue relating to the region's cocoa industry. Although ASEAN is seen as the world's fourth largest cocoa manufacturer, the industry is still facing various economic challenges, which includes the uncertainty of price, a large gap between offer and demand, and the attack of diseases and insects. Speaking at the 22nd ASEAN Cocoa Club meeting in Putrajaya, Malaysia Cocoa Board Deputy Director General Dr. Ramli Kasin said that the meeting is vital to give emphasis to the effort made by cocoa farmers in increasing the production of cocoa. Yeah, we discussed on the, uh, how we uh, help farmers to uh, um, expedite the, uh, the adoption of technology. We have plenty of technology around for cocoa development. Uh, for example, the fertilizer, the how to control the pest and disease, uh, how to manage the uh, farm. But this uh, technology cannot be uh, transferred without the uh, adoptions of the farmers. So that's why we discuss on how best is the strategy so that the farmers can adopt the technology and then we can uh, provide uh, transfer the technology to the farmers uh, in a more efficient way. The meeting, which was attended by the delegation and ASEAN countries' cocoa industry players, also discussed the standard and the progress of the cocoa commodity program for the period of between 2016 to 2020. ASEAN expects that the production of cocoa to hit 237,000 tonnes for 2018-2019, which is 5% of the world's cocoa production and to stabilise Malaysia as country's seventh world largest cocoa mill. The government's investment wing, Kazana National Berhad, has not sold its shares in CIMB Group Holdings Berhad or CIMB. The shares were instead transferred according to securities lending agreements that it had entered with CGS CIMB Securities in Durham Berhad, Credit Suisse Securities Europe Limited and JP Morgan Securities Private Limited Company respectively. Kazana, in a statement, stated that the exchangeable bond will not have a dilutive effect on CIMB's earnings per share. He added that the issuance of exchangeable bonds is part of Kazana's regular financing activities. Ten exchangeable bonds have been issued since 2004. The statement was released following a media report which stated that Kazana had sold 3.45% stake in the banking group valued at an estimated 1.7 billion ringgit or 5 ringgit 20 cent per share. Tun Dr. Mother Mohammad at the Beyond Paradigm Summit yesterday was thrilled and came away impressed after an eight-minute one-on-one conversation with Sophia, the social humanoid robot. The Premier said she, he was thrilled by the robot's ability, especially the lifelike facial expressions which she made with incredible accuracy. I live to like this fool. Do you know my, about my first term as the Prime Minister? Of course. You were sworn in the 16th of July, 1981, about 13,881 days ago from today. I bet the audience is checking my math right now. In his usual witty style, Tun Dr. Mbate said when Sophia responded and turned towards him, he was a little frightened. 
adding that if he were to meet her in the middle of the night, he would surely flee. While chatting with two Dr. Mate, Sophia was seen sketching something at the end of the conversation. She handed to Dr. Mate a black and white portrait of himself and the Prime Minister looked stunned and excited. Sophia will be at the Beyond Paradigm Summit in the federal capital until today and will also make an appearance in Kuching on the 20th and 21st July. The summit, organized by Serba Dynamic Holdings, showcases advanced technologies encapsulating the core ideas of digitalization and data exchange surrounding the Industrial Revolution 4.0. And we kick off with the local league. Pahang secured second spot for the 2019 Malaysia Super League after a 3-1 win over relegation-threatened Felda United. Now, thanks to goals from their imports, Lazarus Kaimbi, Hero Gulon and Dixon Nwakimi. Pahang proved too strong for relegation, threatened Felda United after a 3-1 win in their Super League match last night. The Elephants took the lead after 14 minutes through Kaimbi, who headed home Saidil Ramdani's cross. But Felda were back level through S. Chanturu, who kept his composure to lob Ramazay T. Ross and pass into the empty net. The visitors had several chances to go in front but wasted them and were made to pay when Gulon restored Pahang's lead through another header. Dixon, who came on as a substitute, made the points save two minutes from time with a powerful finish into the top corner. Now Pahang could have added a fourth goal deep into injury time, but Muhammadu Sumare saw his penalty brilliantly saved by Nur Aslan Razali. The defeat leaves Felda with a must-win match against Kedah in the final league match on the 21st of July. The win means Pahang claims second spot in the league table. And that's it from us this afternoon in our top story, government to shut down illegal factories and landfills. Join me again at 7 this evening. I'm Jessica Lee. Thank you for watching.